Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now on the table today we've got a Dark Angel, who's been requested a couple of times. These guys, since the earliest days of the Horus Heresy, have been steeped in secrecy, and they relentlessly pursue the Fallen. Now, the actual armor itself is probably one of the easiest parts to do, and certainly one of the easier ones out there as far as Space Marines go. But with just a few little details, you can really make that color scheme stand out, really make it pop. Now, one or two of you might notice he's actually standing on a 25mm base, and that is because uh, when I first assembled this guy a few years ago, the 32mm bases hadn't come out yet. So, you don't need to point that out, I promise, it's not a mistake. <laughs> Whatever the case, painting him is actually fairly simple, so let's go straight ahead and get a look at what we're going to need for that armor. So to start off with, if you have access to any Caliban green spray, you can base coat your miniature with that. Now I don't, so I've given him a quick blast of Chaos Black and then gone over the top and used Caliban green from the pot there. Just a couple of thin coats to give him a nice even base coat. The effect is much the same, but one's just fractionally quicker than the other. Now once you've done that, whichever way you go about it, over the top, we're going to shade the whole miniature in non-oil. And that's just going to give us the shading in all of those recesses and make his armor look, you know, three-dimensional basically. Over the top of that we're then going to hit it again with Caliban Green. We're going to give it an overbrush that'll help bring up the color again, make it look not so dark, but leave most of the shading intact in all of those recesses. Following that we're going to hit it with a really bright dry brush and it's going to be Niblet Green over the top. You can see that's quite a departure in tone, <laughs> but we are going to do something with it. Over the top we're going to hit that with some Bealtan Green. What that'll do is bring those two colors a little bit closer together. So first things first, let's crack out the big old brush and put some Nuln Oil on there. Now if you have a large shade brush, this might be a good one to use here. Um, I've just got a fairly large brush. You don't need to be particularly careful with this, but you also don't really need it to be completely swimming in Nuln Oil. All you need to do is make sure that you're getting this into all of the recesses and just work it in. Take your time, go around and make sure the whole miniature is covered in this stuff. Now after about 40 minutes that Nuln Oil is dry and it's really important that you leave it to dry for as long as you can because this next step if any of that Nuln Oil is still wet we're going to pick it up and smear it all over the model and that'll mean starting over if you want to fix it. So I spent 40 minutes I went off and started modding Skyrim so you know find yourself something else to do for a little while or do up a batch of these guys, five or so at a time, and you can come back and paint them as and when you fancy. But, whatever the case, what we're going to do now is get our Caliban Green back out. Now I've got a large base brush, you can use a dry brush, anything like that, just something with big and flat. And instead of working all of the paint off the bristles, we're going to leave most of it on really, and just lightly start flicking this back across larger areas. So his backpack his shoulder pads along his legs. Okay, Anywhere that we want to brighten up that green again but leave that shading intact. So all you need to do, this is very similar to dry brushing just with a little bit more paint. Go around now and just pick out anywhere that you want that green to be nice and solid again. Now that we've brought that Caliban green back up you can see how that shading really works in the recesses there. Might be a little difficult to see on the camera but trust me on my honor as a gentleman, it looks pretty cool. Now some folks like to leave it there, you know, go for a really dark, dark angel. But, hey, let's go a little bit brighter. Now when I say a little bit brighter, we're going to go to Niblet Green. Now I've got here my small dry brush. And as with every time you want to do dry brushing, you really want to start with as little on your brush as you can. Because if you put too much on to begin with, you're going to have a big problem. So what I'm going to try and do here is just lightly go and catch the very edges of detail that I want to highlight. So similarly, if I was doing an edge highlight, just areas that I want to catch and make look they've got an extreme hard edge. Now you'll find that in some places, like on this helmet here, it's going to sort of splash over a little bit as you're going around. But don't worry too much about that because we can fix that up with the next step. So looking in particular at the back of his backpack here, this is another really good spot. All I want to do is go, I suppose, against the grain is the best way to explain it, and just lightly build up that edge of color, okay? Now, some Dark Angels I've seen painted with a really bright edge, and I mean almost yellow in some cases. 
I'm not a huge fan of that, but you know, your results may vary. This is your model. Either way, what I'm going to do now is go around and edge up all of the edges on this marine. So we'll come back and see how that looks when I'm done. Now here's me having said, I don't normally go for a really bright highlight on these Dark Angels, and <laughs> this is what I come back with. So you can be forgiven for thinking things have gone a little mad, but luckily we've got Bealtan Green here, and we're going to fix this up in a second. I just wanted to quickly point out, if there's any areas that you find are a little difficult to get the brush into while you're dry brushing, don't worry too much about them, because you'll tend to find you don't see them on the tabletop so much, so you can just skip over those a little if you're having difficulty. Either way, let's get a slightly smaller brush this time, because we want a bit more control, and our Bealtan Green, and just cover over, again, all of the armour. You'll find that what this does as it dries is to bring those two shades of green together. So all I'm going to do now is just a little bit more carefully this time, paint on Bealtan Green over all of the armour. Now with that dry, you can see how it's brought together those two colours. The worst of the patchiness is dealt with, and it darkens it down just enough that it doesn't look so sharp and cartoony. He still looks like he might be an extra in Tron, <laughs> but I think it looks a lot better than it did before the wash. So what we're going to do now is just sort of quickly gloss over and do the little details. Now there aren't a lot of these to do on the Dark Angels, luckily enough, so I'm going to skip over most of it, just showing what, what colours I'm using as I go along, because there's other videos where I've done, you know, the bolters and what have you. So first up, let's just quickly grab some Rhinox Hide, and we'll use this to paint in any leather details. So if you've got uh, equipment pouches, holsters, that sort of thing, get in there now with some Rhinox Hide. Then grab your lead belcher and any sort of metal details. So let's do the bolter. Now I'm going to paint in all of the bolter in silver here. And the reason for that is that when we come back to do the casing in Mephiston Red, it'll cover much easier over the silver than it would over, you know, straight Caliban green. So there we go. And anywhere that's going to be like a goldy color later, just bat on a little bit of this because it will cover much easier over the top of that lead belcher. So I'm going to go around now and fill in all of these silver details. And grab your Mephiston red and fill in the bolter casing. Take your time with this one, but you can use this as a tidy up stage. You might find in some areas you want to go back just to solidify the color a little bit more, but you can have a play around with that and see how you like the look of it. And then any rope areas, you can get a bit of Zandri dust and just quickly base coat in that stuff. And then at the same time, if you've got any purity seals, you can use the Zandri dust to base coat those as well. Then we'll get a little bit of Nuln Oil on a medium layer brush, and you can start shading in these areas. I'm not going to do this on the Purity Seal, but the rope and what have you, we will do that. So, as you do now, just carefully fill in those areas, making sure you don't go overboard <laughs> and end up getting it on any of that armor. So, take your time. This won't take particularly long, and just Nuln Oil these bits. Now while those shades are drying, I'm just going to get in with a little bit of Scream of Pink and fill in the wax seal on as Purity Seal. And then when that's dry, I'm going to give this and the Zandri Dust an Agrax Earthshade Wash. That won't take too much. Now he's not looking too bad. You know, you could base him up, put him on the table like that, play a few games. But let's get on to some highlights. I've got a little bit of Retributor Armor here, and I'm just going to lightly go over areas that I want to look gold. You, know, you can use the shading that's been left behind on the silver to your advantage, so you don't have to muck about too much with this. Just a quick blast of that, and gold detail, easy as. Now while we're still doing the metal, let's get our Stormhost silver, and just lightly do the very edges of these metallic details to make the bolt gun and the little dealies on the back of his uh, backpack there really stand out. So you can be quite sparing with this because it's going to be a very sharp transition of color, um, but it looks pretty cool. So just go around now and anywhere that you really want to shine, hit it with a little bit of Stormhost Silver. Now, while you're painting the bolt gun, I tend to think it looks good if you do the same to the red too. So I've got a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet here, and I'm just going to carefully do 
the very edges, ah, there we go, of the red. Now you'll see I'm sort of moving my brush backwards and forwards and slowly approaching where I'm going to put that line. Just helps me maintain a little bit more control than going and smearing it down. It's not the most precise way of getting a straight line when you've got to use the tip of your brush, but I find it works on some of these details. So have a play around and as always, you know, see what works for you. We'll go back to Zandri Dust for the purity seal. And this time we're just gonna sort of scratchy lines. Doing this way, you can avoid the recesses and leave that deeper shading, but you keep a little bit of texture on the paper. So that's kind of cool, I like doing that. And then just a wee dab of pink horror along the edge of the wax areas. If you wanted to, you can go back to Scream of Pink instead. It'll be a little less sharp in color transition, um, but it saves you buying a whole pot just for pink horror. You know, It's up to you how you want to do that bit. I'm going to touch in the very corners of any leather details with a bit of Doom Bull Brown, and that'll give us a really nice deep red leather look. So just take your time with that one. And you can add a fair bit of this, to be honest, you know, depending on sort of how you want the, uh, the leather to come out. So I might add a few scratchy little lines, but that's up to you. That's, you know, style choice there. Now I've got here a little bit of white scar, and I'm hoping I don't mess this up <laughs> on the camera. This will be a little bit easier for you guys at home, but get in there now. Carefully add in your white scar into the eye sockets. I'm going to finish this off, <laughs> off camera. Now the trick I find when painting marine eyes is to paint from one corner and go in towards the center. Then flip them upside down and repeat the process. Because if you're going towards the center, your brush is going to travel towards the largest area. Where if it goes a little bit awry, it's not going to matter too much. So what we've got after that is some blood leather. This is one of the glaze colors. I'm going to get in there with this a little bit on the end of my detail brush or your small layer brush and just bloop, add it in there. Now, once this is dried, you might find you want to go back in with a second touch of this, depending if you want to intensify the red, but that's your call. And it is as easy as that. Now, once that blood leather dries, how cool is that? And that's super easy to do. So the last step on this Dark Angel is actually by far probably the most boring. And that is get yourself some black and all of this undersuit. Okay, so the ribbing and the cables and what have you. Just do a quick coat of black to separate them from the armor. And it'll make that look all the more green for it. So this is just those finishing touches now. You don't need to be terribly precise with this. Just enough to break up that pattern, okay? Now with that done, you see I've just quickly blue tacked him to the top of this uh, spray can lid. I'm gonna hit him with a Munitorum varnish spray. So, how does that look? It looks like that. <laughs> what that varnish does is just to even out how light reacts to the actual model itself. And it helps blend in the last of those imperfections between the two varieties of green that we used. And on top of all of that, it really helps when you sort of want to protect your model from the rigors of gaming. If you're going to apply any decals, I recommend you put them on before you do that Munitor and Varnish though, because it'll help seal them in and protect them from handling too. So with that, our Dark Angel is complete, ready to take to the battlefields of the 41st millennium, pursue the Fallen and the forces of chaos wherever they might be found. Now this is a pretty quick way of getting these guys on the table. And as you can see, there are a few rough edges but it's not too hard to actually smooth them out. If you want to spend a little more time, these basic techniques will still work perfectly well. Just be a bit more finicky with how you put them on. So hopefully guys, something there was useful to you. As always, you can get in touch, the old YouTube box down there, or there's my Facebook and Twitter both linked too. As an aside, this is also the first of these videos that's made possible with the backing of my lovely patrons. You'll notice down there, I've also got the link to a Patreon or how I Patreon because how do you pass up a pun that good? Uh, totally optional, guys. Just as an aside, you know, it is always going to be completely free for you guys to view this stuff. Nothing's ever going to be behind a paywall. But on the off chance you enjoy what I'm doing and you want to make it a little bit easier for me to get these things out, 
then by all means, you know, you can chip in as and when you fancy. So thank you very much for your time, guys, and you enjoy the rest of your day.